brows creased, head cocked slightly to a side, he seems to be intently listening. Do you hear something? No? I thought... There! Do you hear it? We stop in the middle of a clearing. My heartbeat quickens even more, though now for very different reasons. Footsteps. And snuffling. Faintly, but unmistakably, it came from behind us. The sound of wet snout rooting through live roots and dead leaves. This would be almost too funny for words if it isn't so dangerous. What is it? The sound comes again, but this time from the undergrowth in front of us. The vegetation shakes and quivers and then gives way, trampled down by the black and bristly bulk of a wild boar. A few beady red eyes glare at us. The boar gives a short, deep grunt and paws the earth. Stupid porker. We came out here for the sole pe purpose of avoiding you. That's the papa boar, I believe. A rustling comes from behind us, Nazir spins around and groans. I don't need to. Not another one. That should be the mama boar. Have we intruded into their territory? Worse, I think we're near their den. Inch by inch, the boars close in on Nazir and I from either side. It is, an alarming, it is alarmingly plain that they have nothing but murder in their brains. If these two are merely defending their den, they won't pursue us if we retreat very, very slowly, will they? Normally that should be the case, yes, but not for this pair. Why not? Look at their flanks, bloody and crisscrossed with scars. They're mad with pain. The work of an Eskian hound pack, I'd guess. They got away from the hounds. I'm certain the beaters let them go when they realize these two are guarding a nearby den. They are probably too aggressive and dangerous to be chased by the hunt. You mean the two of us are facing down boars too aggressive and dangerous to be chased by the hunt? Never a dull mom moment with you around, right, Nazir? Ha, now that you mention it. Grunt. Watch out! The enraged boar throws itself at us, a short, horribly sharp... Its short, horribly sharp tusks are thrust to mangle. We spring apart, avoiding the onslaught in the nick of time. A moment later, the sow joins in, in the fray. Though not as large, she is more deadly than the male on account of the den and the piglets that must be nearby. Tossing its head, the boar charges Nazir. My breath catches in my throat. But Nazir was ready. Calmly, he, descri he describes a semicircle with his left arm stiffly outstretched. A strong wind sweeps across the forest. Though not strong enough to knock down the boar, the wind blows it off trajectory of its charge, so that instead of Nazir, it ends up smashing into the trunk of an old oak tree. Stunned by the impact, the boar sways for a moment and collapses on the undergrowth. Well done. Yes, that was rather good, wasn't it? Hmm? You're left, Falky! I turn just in time to see the sow turtling towards me. Instinctively, I duck and roll, a hair's breadth from death, so close that I could feel the whoosh of its immense bulk flying past me. The sow swerves around, readying for another charge. These porkers are surprisingly agile for their sizes, aren't they? Nazir holds his hands up in front of him. Leaves and twigs dance up from the forest bed and swirl in the air in a straight line from him to the watching sow. A second later... <laughs> that was just extremely funny. The sow is lifted from its trotters and flung like a ragdoll through the forest, tumbling down to crash a few yards in the distance. Nazir turns to me, grinning. How was that? I have rarely seen such a powerful display of wind magic, only by experienced war mages in their prime. It was alright, a little lacking in finesse, but otherwise passable. I'm glad you were paying some attention in class. My dear Valky, you know I never did anything of the sort. I look at the two incapacitated wild boars. A thought strikes me. If we kill these two and bring them back to camp, we can use them to pretend we had been part of the hunt after all. Let's not be beastly, Valky. Why should we kill them? They were only trying to protect their home and their family. Besides, what would happen to the piglets if their parents died? Starved to death, probably. Why? You are a callous and uncaring brute. That was merely a jest, not a suggestion, Nazir. I wouldn't have followed it if it was. Anyway, it's against the rules. Eski and nobility will look right down on us once they realize we bagged the boars with magic instead of trusty stout boar spears. In that case, we'd better make ourselves scarce from this area before... Once more, the sound of wet snout rooting through the leaves come from behind, causing both of us to freeze. The vegetation shakes and gives way, and multiple black shadows emerge from them. Run! No matter how excellent Nazir's magical powers are, we have no chance against a whole herd of wild boars. Without a word of complaint this time, Nazir takes me by the arm and pulls me back the way we came. A carefree romp through the quiet woods? Heh. <laughs> 
at peace with ourselves and with all the creatures in this good world. Aren't we? This is not funny. Oh, hush, you enjoyed yourself. Admit it. With brilliant laughter, Nazir firmly presses his palm against my back as we run, and I feel a strong flow of wind magic rushing through me. My body suddenly feels much lighter, and I pick up my speed. Nazir follows close at my side, as if guarding me as we leave the forest and the boars behind us. On our way back to the camp, at last, I cannot help but join him in his laughter. The hunting camp is in an uproar. Retainers dash to and fro the camp, delivering messages and sharing gossip. In front of their tents, noblemen hold forth heatedly with each other. Occasionally, they stab their thing fingers into each other's faces and shake their fists in inarticulate rage. It's not on our account, is it? Gosh, no. Everyone here knows I'm going to vanish before the hunt starts and disappear for an hour or ten. I wonder what happened. Your brothers? Both seem fine. Seren looks a little worse for wear, to be sure, but that is what you must expect if you decide to take up boar hunting as an afternoon sport. I heave a sigh of relief at the sight of Seren and Aurelius resting in the, in the central royal pavilion of the camp. Each of them is enclosed by a bodyguard of heavily armoured swordsmen. Though too far for them to make out their expressions, they give me the impression of being somewhat nervy and rary. I have the suspicion Nazir and I are not the only two people who had a close brush with death today. Look, here's old Garion coming to tell us off. With a face like thunder, Garion is striding up to us, flanked by a pair of palace guards. Your Highness, where have you been? You drove us nearly out of our minds with worry. I was about to send out a search party. I had merely taken a little walk. The royal tutor can bear witness. Garion glares at me. I offer a helpless shrug in response. He actually was, Lord Marshal. So was I. <sighs> the beleaguered Marshal massages his temples. Regardless of what you two had been doing, you are not to venture outside the hunting camp until further notice. Do you understand? I suppose you will want me to join my dearly beloved brothers at the Royal Pavilion. If you would be so obliging, your highness. You know me, always happy to be of service. Garion makes a curt motion at his guards, who immediately detach themselves from him to surround the prince. Pip pip, fellows! Nazir chuckles as he walks off. Garion and I stare after his retreating back. What was all that about? I ought to be asking you. He checks himself with obvious effort. We believe there has been an attempt on Prince Seren's life. Prince Seren? Who would? I don't know. Garion lowers his voice. These are treacherous times, and there are treacherous people about. Please, help me keep them safe. I look in the direction Garion gestures at. Nazir has reached the royal pavilion. Cheerfully disregarding the gauntlets of bodyguards around his brothers, he throws an arm around Sel Seren and ruffles Aurelius by his hair. His behaviour clearly ex exasperates both, yet in such a way they cannot help but begin to relax. I'll do my best, Garion. I know. You have my thanks, Lady Rosencruz. I nod. Really, I wonder what happened during our absence. And time for a pause. We're actually going to do a mission, actually, so yeah. Actually going to do a mission, actually. Congrats, Kenny, you said actually twice. Uh, the orphanage had been having some difficult times as of late. In such times, even the smallest inconveniences can seem monumental. So when the orphanage orphanage's wooden swing broke down, Nazir and Ishbel promptly tried to assist and asked me to enchant some wooden planks to fix it and prevent it from breaking again. After some thought, I decided not to enchant the wood, but rather paint the wooden planks with enchanted varnish. That process was considerably easier and would have the added benefit of preventing splinters. Satisfied with my work, I accompanied Nazir and Ishbel to the orphanage. Unfortunately, it quickly became apparent that there were more pressing problems than a broken swing. The orphanage was not given the resources to fix problems as they happened, which led to the melange of issues that awaited us. Issues that we would not leave without rectifying. We not only needed to fix the swing, but we also needed to sweep the fireplace, scrub the counters, and do all the other chores that the orphanage was too understaffed to take care of. I could have spent months lamenting the lobbying that had destroyed this country's infrastructure, which is what I think some of the nicer nobles do in their free time, but in doing so I would slow our pace considerably. We could not afford to steep ourselves in negativity when there was work to be done. I divided the tasks as such. The stronger people took care of the larger repairs, and the more detail-oriented people took care of the cleaning. Surprisingly, this meant that the more physical tasks were done by the caretakers, who had strength and patience in spades. We were done relatively quickly given the enormity of our task. Soon, instead of scrubbing down counters, we were pushing the children on the new swing. I even had the opportunity to talk to Nazir alone. 
he is not as peppy here as he is in the palace. I'm truly convinced that his behavior here there is an act. Oh. Throughout the week, the corridors of the palace are abuzz with rumors of what happened during the hunt. I don't think this is a skippable event. Okay. At the end of the week, there are so many gossips on the grapevine, many of them are in direct conflict with one another. Oops, my B. I actually wanted to check this. Oh, I could have sworn we were further, further along with Aurelius. At the end of the week, there are so many... Yeah, okay. But by shifting through what I did manage to hear, I am able to determine one thing. Saren had been in mortal peril during last week's hunt when a stray arrow ne nearly struck him. Fortunately, Aurelius noticed the danger and pushed Saren, Saren out of the way of the arrow's flight in the nick of time. Who had loosed that stray arrow remained shrouded in mystery. Only one thing was for sure, no one believes it to be an accident. My dear Valky, if you keep frowning so hard, you'll get, a premature, you'll get premature wrinkles on your brow. And that would be a shame, because it is a very nice brow. Yeah? I blink, startled out of my musings. I am in the classroom. Of course, the classroom is empty as it should be. After all, I had finished delivering today's lecture to the princes. Saren and Aurelius have already left. Nazir stands in front of me, arms folded and casually leaning against the wall. Is something the matter, Nazir? That's just it, my dear. Exactly what I wanted to ask. He read my mind. Abashed, I look away from his teasing smile, trying to compose myself. You're quite easy to read, I'm afraid. Especially when you're curious about something and dying to find out more, but too proud to go around asking for information. Was I that obvious? Only to people who have known you for a while. I'm guessing nobody got around to telling you about the incident in last week's hunt. I shake my head. Nobody wants to tell me exactly what happened, although I'm not sure why. Probably because they didn't know. Only a handful of the highest nobles in the kingdom witnessed the incident firsthand, and Aurelius imposed a, his gag order. Aurelius did that. That's as much as I managed to get out of him. He told me he didn't want to discuss it, and he had his reasons. That is why the incident has been hushed up. I did hear some rumours. The most important thing is, is Saren alright? Of course he is. Didn't you see him hale and hearty this morning in the lecture? Don't worry about him, he's used to it, you know. What do you mean, it? Little accidents that might have been fatal. Unusual and dangerous mits mishaps whose perpetrators can never be found. The three of us are pretty used to them by now. Nothing to make a fuss about. What accidents? You mean assassination attempts? How can you be so cavalier? You know, Valky, when one has been part of a royal family for long enough, one learns to take a more detached attitude towards the amusing life-threatening incidents that happen to one every now and then. As Nazir notices my sinking mood, he slings an arm around my shoulder and laughs cheerfully. You are just not used to it. Stick with us for another ten years or so, and you'll see that accidents can happen, but since no one is hurt, there is no need to be unduly worried. As if the regular disputes with empty-headed nobles wasn't enough. Being part of a royal family really doesn't sound very pleasant. Unfortunately, I'm not going to disagree with you on this particular point. Now then, shall we? Scratching my head, I follow the prince out of the classroom. Perhaps Nazir's discourse is in jest, but perhaps he's trying to cheer up everyone in earnest. I still cannot help but worry about the princes, but since nobody is speaking, I suppose I have to let it go. Russell, huh? I, can I skip this? Yes, I can. Nothing new there. I know... I know this one ends up being one with Nazir. But I'm not gonna bother right now, honestly. Alright, I will be back after the lesson. Okay, this may be... new? The sun shines down from a cloudless sky. A warm western wind blows pleasantly. Thanks to both, the palace gardens seem especially beautiful today. No, it's not. It's not new. Which sucks, but I'm not going to pause again. Actually, I am going to pause again. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. The black tea is strong and scalding on my tongue. I swirl it in my mouth, savouring the bitter fragrance before I drink the mouthful down. Ah, I close my eyes and sigh in contentment. At moments like this, I cannot help but appreciate my plush and comfortable present surroundings compared to the Spartan existence I led as a junior member in the High Council. Opening my eyes, I once more take up quill in hand to work on my newest research report. Regarding the potential dangers posed by unidentified magic users, there is reason to believe... 
I am interrupted by the clatter of boots pelting up the stairs, followed by the door slamming against the wall. Nazir bursts into my study. I say, charming weather today, don't you think so? Try to remember to knock before entering Nazir. I'm so abjectly sorry. He closes the door and proceeds to drum his knuckles on it. I chuckle helplessly. Won't you please come in? I say, charming weather today, don't you think so? Very fine indeed. I stretch, pushing the report away from me as I do so. Clearly, I am not about to get any more writing done this morning. You won't mind if I take a seat, my dear Valky? Certainly not, your highness. I rise gravely to my feet and walk around the table, pulling the chair out for Nazir. Will it please your highness to grace me with the pleasure of his company? Nazir looks crestfallen. I'm not interrupting anything, am I? As a matter of fact, I laugh as I toss the half-written reporter to him. What's this? Regarding the potential dangers of... Oh. A little piece of research that I am working on, summarising the potential of different branches of magic on the political situation. The council likes to be kept informed on this subject. Anyway, did you want to talk to me about something? Not really. Nazir favours me with his trademark roguish grin. I just felt like talking to you, Valky. You see, I missed the sweet melody of your dulcet voice and longed for the sight of your enchanting face. I pull the research report back to me and pretend to start writing once more. I honestly do want to talk to you. Right. I rarely get to see you outside class, and then not always under the most desirable of circumstances. I thought it would be nice to get to know you better. I am an open book, your highness. What would you like to know? This, for instance. He taps the sheaf of paper in front of me. What are you writing this for? It is my work for the council. Oh? I thought the council dispatched you just to tutor my brothers and me. And to protect you from mind-controlled assassins, scheming nobles, and the occasional berserk boar. Right. Seems more than enough to keep your schedule packed to me. It would be, but this is my first field work. Field work? Yes, junior members are mostly retained in council premises to provide research, enchantments, and alchemical equipment. I was always more refined to the research side of things. I didn't know that. I thought everyone in the High Council pokes their noses in other people's affairs for a living. Keeping the countries at peace, bestow new inventions upon them and all that. Directly or indirectly, this is a reasonably close description of what everyone in the High Council does. But members not deemed to be of sufficiently mature temperament are kept in the back to support those working in the field. This is the first time I have been assigned to the field. They sent you out alone. Usually junior members on their first field assignment are accompanied by a senior mentor. My case is something for an exception, I suppose. I've wondered why myself. And before this, most of your job was... He gestures at the report. Occasionally, I am also called upon to make potions, salves, and bombs for the armory. But yes, research takes up most of my waking time in the council. Do you enjoy doing these things? I don't know what to fucking say to you at this point. Don't know which one you'd prefer, buddy. Right, so we're there, and... No, but they're challenging. I don't think he cared for that. This either doesn't matter or it does. Yes, they're very interesting. I think he liked that one, right? I think he liked that one. Of course, I love reading about the different customs and traditions of faraway lands, their politics and lines of succession. How, sub how to subvert their governments, how to use mind controlling deviants to destabilize the political situation. I'm afraid that that was taught to me by Eskia. But not the first. Nothing that the council doesn't already teach. Honestly speaking, the different departments of the council are not always at peace with each other. Even I have to even I have had to tussle my even I have had to tussle with the garrison soldiers stationed here. And here I am wondering how you always seem to you always see you seem to always take every obstacle thrown at you in stride. Your work at the council must have prepared you well for them. What was that flash? What about your work at the palace, your highness? Raphael. Nazir starts, starts up from his chair with a guilty smile. What a delightful surprise! I've been searching all over the place for you. To avoid being in the same room, no doubt. Well, I found you now, and I'm not letting you out of my sight until you finish today's work. But I was busy asking Valky, I mean, the royal tutor, about matters of grave and urgent importance. I'm sure you were very busy today, your highness, and I shouldn't detain you any longer. But... 
throwing a last despairing and betrayed look at me, Nazir lets himself be dragged out of my study by Raphael, who is already nagging him about the many tasks he has still not begun. With a chuckle, I return to my own work. Right, let's not forget to fucking create this now, since we can. We couldn't before. To my disgust. <laughs> okay, um... What am I missing? For this, I am missing last bit of darkness, because we will need that eventually, and we know that. Although I don't really need that many. Um, what else could I make him do this, I guess? Um, he has enough of that now, so let's give him all his fire. Um, why am I making him learn wind? I am actually baffled at myself. Let's give him some darkness to learn. Let's have a look at the week. It's week 30 next, which is a good chance for that. So it's, um... Week 30 next, let's look at the guide. Um, okay, it's just, it's nothing important. I don't think there's anything that I'm lacking as of right now. And probably not for a while. Um, but you never know. You never know when you're gonna need something, like charisma, which is a bit later on. But let's get our charisma up and I will see you after the pause. Alright. I decide to stop by the classroom earlier than usual this morning to set up the equipment for a practical demonstration. That's when I hear a most un that's when I hear a most unusual noises. But dash it, I haven't the foggiest what any of that meant. Concentrate, Nazir, please. My dearest brother, can't you see that if I concentrated any harder, my head will explode and splatter, splatter brain matter over this lovely classroom? I can scarcely believe it. Has Nazir decided to appear to class early and is actually applying himself to his studies? You will need all that brain matter for the test ne next week, so I do not suggest you splatter them about. Now, let us go over this passage once more. There comes a groan of agony followed by a sigh so steeped in despair it can make the stoniest heart tremble and crack. I recognize that sound well. It is the sound of Nazir made to study. Good morning, your highnesses. I call cheerily as I enter the class. Lady Rosencruz, good morning. I hurt. I am in torment. I suffer. Fighting back the urge to smile, I dump the equipment on the lectern and walk over to the two princes. They are sitting side by side, poring over a textbook on the properties of wood magic. Notebooks, worksheets, and diagrams are scattered haphazardly over the table. Something the matter, Nazir? Mutely, Nazir lifts up the textbook. Don't understand a word in this thing, my dear Valky. I'm sure we've gone through this before. Nazir has been having trouble with the last few lectures on wood magic, but of course we can't skip it because we're on Nazir's route. Since that's my magical affinity, he and I have decided to come to class before lessons today to figure out why he's having difficulties. It turns out I'm having difficulties with the whole darn subject. That's not surprising. I sit on the chair next to Nazir, smiling to take away the sting from my words. Wood magic is the- oh, I don't care. We've already gone through this. Right. Saren has a solid understanding. Nazir, it must be said, has outdone himself by coming up with a blah blah blah. Right, yep. Get started. Tally-ho. I nod with that and the lesson for the day commence. Great. Ooh, there's a lot more things here. No, wait, that's the one for Nizia. Okay. Okay, um... Hmm. Make sure I haven't forgot anything. Not quite a bit of moolah. Ooh. Hmm. We should probably just do this again. All right, I'll be back after the pause. Aurelius had imposed his gag order. This is obviously when we are now being we're now learning of what happened at the hunt. Uh, his gag order. So I suppose you haven't found out about the situation. During the hunt, someone did indeed try to assassinate Seren, so it was really no accident. Regrettably, not to our luck, they didn't succeed. However, we have reasons to believe Councillor Gabrielle may have something to do with the culprit. That 
The Lord Regent shakes his head and sighs. He would probably feel uncomfortable telling me any more than this. Now I see. You are not sure if the information about the slave trader may be a trap laid by Marin. Right? And I think of Nazir, who, while thinking of himself to be lacking a to be lacking abilities, constantly tries to cheer up everyone and soothe their minds. I slowly breathe out. We go into... I can make these. Ooh, I can actually make them? Insanity. Wait, did I do that last time? No, I don't think I did. I don't think I had enough for them last time. Mm. How much... Uh, charisma do I need by the end of the game? I think I'm good for what I have right now. Not not right now, actually. One more, maybe? Yeah. I need 68 charisma by week 53. Then I can do whatever the hell I want. So... Well, that's good, at least. Um... Right, we'll do one more charisma just to get it up there, and then... We will work on getting up. Mm, we'll do our leadership. I'll see you after the pause. Okay, actually went really well. Uh, he do the one that gives us some intelligence. I guess lay traps like we always did. Oh, hello, my dear Valky. Snapping to attention, I immediately let my arms fall to my sides and look at Nazir. This is when we have, like, an itchy arm because we got hurt. Yes, Nazir. Did you have a question? His usual smile is missing. In fact, this might be one of the few times I've seen him with a serious expression. The prince's gaze darts to my left arm before quickly returning to my eyes. Are you feeling okay? It's nothing too serious, really. I start only to pause when I realize that I've given myself away. I should have just denied him. Now, Prince Seren is also peering at me with concern. Even Prince Aurelius has given, gives me a scrutinizing look. Oh, so you are unwell. Maybe you should get to Sala to take. Maybe you should get Sala to take a look. Right now, in fact. Knowing that I can no longer refute, I decided to divert his attention elsewhere instead. Nazir, are you saying that out of concern for my well-being and not because you want the lesson to come to an end? He grins at me, perhaps relieved that I am well enough to jab at his antics. My dear Valky, what have I done for you to think of so poorly of me? In fact, if it gets you to rest, I'll work even harder than usual. Oh? The other day, Belle was being a deer and gifted me some exotic tea leaves. Enchant it with a wisp and fire magic, a wisp of fire magic, and the taste will be even more excellent, I promise. So, I think you should sit back and let Sala take a look at your wounds while I prepare a refreshing cup of tea. What do you think? The corners of Seren's lips twitch upwards and Prince Aurelius sighs. I cannot help but soften at their obvious concern. Nazir's eyes gleam at me in anticipation. I have to admit, I'm somewhat relieved at the idea of being able to rest sooner rather than later. I still haven't fully recovered from all of yesterday's excitement. Very well. I'll look for Sala. Splendid. You won't regret it. I smile at the princes before gathering my books and leaving the room. Before I can go look for Sala, however, Nazir stops me in the corridor. Listen, Valky. Your Highness? I am sorry, you know. You got hurt because you fought the Sval trader in our place. Not at all. We both know you couldn't have confronted the Sval due to political reasons, and I was the one who agreed to help. Besides, it's nothing serious. Nazir doesn't look too convinced, but he doesn't pursue the issue. For the remainder of the afternoon, I am allowed to relax under Sala's gently flowing water magic while enjoying tea personally made by the second prince. Ooh la la. Alright, we have enough charisma for the rest of the game now. Um, what about our leadership? We're gonna have more than enough leadership, but then it suddenly takes a big peak and you need 170 for the end, which is nuts. Absolutely nuts, I tell you. I think I can do it though. Wait, what week is it? Also, do we have any items? Okay. Uh, it is week 33 coming up. We don't need anything really. And anything that we may need, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, we're good. Maybe I should just do leadership just to like get it out of the way. Unless combat is going to be an annoying thing. It was not an annoying thing for a really long time, so we're fine. I'll see you after the pause.
Hey, here he is, uh, confronting us about- well, not confronting, but saying this. People say you are becoming good friends with my nephews, especially with Nazir. I pause, and sure, blah blah blah. And then it's more, Nazir, that child, although he seems to be carefree all the time, he worries about everyone the most. So I have noticed. I have been in his care as well. I see. If he sees you as a good friend who can also guide him, I can truly be relieved. Accept the request. Sadly, that's all there is to it. Anyone else requested anything? No? Okay. The noble's approval is down. Man, damn. It really shouldn't be, but I guess I haven't been doing, like, any missions. Maybe I should do some. But then again, I don't really have the, the, the stuff for it. Let's do this one. We've already read that one, yeah. What? What? Why are you winking? What? What happened? In line. He winks and I feel my cheeks redden. It isn't exactly fair to say, though. Nazir is a good student, even if he needs help focusing every now and then. I ladle up a bowl of soup and then push it against the clock. Okay, so he... So that's... Okay, that's interesting. I mean, sure. The commoners are gonna freaking love me. The nobles freaking hate me, though. So that's a bit of a problem. I don't really know how to make them like me, though. I guess to do stuff around here. The cursed room. I need beauty, which I will fail at because I don't have good beauty at all. It's 26, which is just garbage. So I think I'm just going to have to live with whatever the nobles give me. I mean, as long as I get to 40, it should be fine. Uh, how is everyone else doing? You're fine. You're also fine. Mm. I don't. I don't really know what to do for him. I mean, get some water, I guess. Um, you are doing well as well. I just don't actually think we. Are lacking anywhere? At least I don't think so. Yeah, even Nazir can make that. I need to cough. Okay, um. I guess it's a pause. Alright. Oh, I, I will see you in the next video, actually. Bye!